Singapore's Deep Tunnel Sewerage System, DTSS, was a vision conceived in the 1990s. It was designed to provide a cost-effective and sustainable solution to support Singapore's long-term needs for used water collection, treatment, reclamation and disposal. DTSS Phase 1 serves the eastern part of Singapore and was completed in 2008. It consists of a conveyance system made up of deep tunnels and link sewers, the Changi Water Reclamation Plant and its outfall. Phase 2 will extend this deep tunnel system to the southern and western parts of Singapore. It will have a conveyance system made up of link sewers and deep tunnels comprising of a south tunnel and an industrial tunnel, as well as the Tuas Water Reclamation Plant known as Tuas WRP. By interlinking with Phase 1, DTSS Phase 2 will complete the used water system to serve Singapore for the long term. Kranji WRP remains to the north as part of the three-node used water system. How does the process work? Used water will be channeled from the existing network to the link sewers and into the south tunnel via drop shafts. The used water then flows by gravity along the south tunnel, which will run underneath major roads. It is then conveyed to Twas WRP for treatment. There, advanced treatment technologies will purify it into new water and industrial grade water for reuse. The integrated new water production facility at the Tuas WRP will boost new water supply. Any excess treated effluent will be discharged into the sea in an environmentally responsible manner. The South Tunnel serves as a cost-effective superhighway. Built at a gentle gradient, used water is transported entirely by the force of gravity before being pumped up at Twas WRP. This removes the need for multiple intermediate pumping stations, eliminating the risk of used water overflows. Previously occupied land can then be freed up for higher value developments. The South Tunnel, which ranges from 3 to 6 meters wide, will mainly run along the Ayaraja Expressway. Constructed with tunnel boring machines, the South Tunnel lies deeper than some of the underground subway lines and even crosses beneath the seabed at Tuas Bay before reaching Tuas WRP. One construction challenge lies with the variable soil conditions and existing facilities. The conveyance system will cross under existing tunnels and pass through sedimentary rock with weathered water course channels and soil containing sand pockets. Construction will be carried out with minimal impact. The Phase 2 conveyance system will also feature a complementary secondary liner with HDPE lining to protect against corrosion. One of the key features of the South Tunnel is its advanced sensing capabilities. Embedded on the primary lining, fiber optic wires are installed along the entire length of the tunnel. This monitoring system checks the structural integrity of the tunnel without the need for physical inspection. The fiber optic wires also allow engineers to pinpoint the section that requires isolation for human excess in the event of repairs and emergencies. Used water will then flow through the tunnel uninterrupted via an alternative path. The conveyance system also features air jumpers and odor control facilities located strategically at shafts along the South Tunnel. They treat odorous air that may be expelled upwards. Air jumpers act as forced ventilation. They are designed to push odorous air back down into the tunnel to be treated by downstream odor control facilities. When the Tuas WRP is operational, Existing Ulupandan and Jurong WRPs will be phased out, freeing up land for higher value development. In addition, advanced technologies at the Tuas WRP will improve its energy efficiency and reduce cost and manpower. The Tuas WRP design promotes energy efficiency. By building upwards, it has a more compact land footprint as compared to conventional WRPs and allows for natural ventilation and lighting, as well as easier access for maintenance. One advanced technology is the membrane bioreactor process, which replaces the conventional bioreactor, secondary sedimentation and microfiltration and ultrafiltration stages, thus streamlining the used water treatment and new water processes into one. 
This provides space savings while generating a higher quality effluent for discharge into the sea. The plant will be the largest membrane bioreactor facility in the world, treating 800,000 cubic meters of used water per day. Another technology implemented at TWAS WRP is the thermal hydrolysis process, which will reduce the space required for biosolids treatment and increase biogas and energy yields. TWAS WRP will be co-located with the National Environment Agency's Integrated Waste Management Facility, IWMF, to reap the potential synergies of the water energy waste nexus, maximizing energy and resource recovery. For example, the food waste received at IWMF will be pre-sorted and then digested with sludge using TWAS WRP's digestives, producing biogas. The resulting biogas and sludge are then fed back as a fuel source to IWMF for incineration. The electricity generated at IWMF is then supplied to TWAS WRP for its operation. Besides process synergies, the two will share common facilities like the admin building and car park to further optimize land use. The co-located facility is compact, resource efficient and the first of its kind in the world planned from the ground up. DTSS Phase 2 is envisioned to be sustainable, resilient and cost efficient. To be ready by 2025, DTSS Phase 2 will be completed in stages through multiple tender contracts. With its completion, the deep tunnel sewerage system will play an integral role in Singapore's diversified water portfolio, creating a sustainable used water management system for our country's future.